Welcome back to the Big Sunday Show. Will there be any payback for PayPal? The digital payment system put out a policy that would allow them to find users for misinformation. Social media exploded, even former PayPal execs. Former PayPal president David Marcus tweeting in part, quote, a private company now gets to decide to take your money if you say something they disagree with. Insanity. And Elon Musk, who co-founded PayPal, replied, agreed. After the backlash, PayPal said the policy was posted, quote, in error. Earlier on Sunday Morning Futures, Arizona Senate candidate Blake Masters, who received large donations from PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, sounded off. We need to uh, ban companies at that level, at that size, especially if they're touching banking or if they're in social media, we're going to ban these companies from discriminating against users because of the political content of their speech. That's how we treat the phone company, right? Verizon can't go and listen to you and I have a telephone conversation and say, ooh, that's too conservative. You can't let a non-bank lender at the size of PayPal just discriminate against people and decide what's misinformation and find them. All right, well, here we go again. Um, Gianno, take a listen to what a corporate affairs director from PayPal had to say about this uh, whenever this came up. They said PayPal is not fining people for misinformation, and this language was never intended to be inserted in our policy. Our teams are working to correct our policy pages. We're sorry for the confusion this has caused. They say this is just a big fuss up, a mistake. <laughs> Do you buy that? All lies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, sincerely. So they originally said we're gonna fine users $2,500 for misinformation. Then they put out misinformation. So who's gonna find them is the real question. You know, this makes me think, do we even live in a free country anymore? You're really going to be the arbiter of truth? You're gonna look at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or any published writing and say that you're gonna find us? I don't believe it, not one bit, that that's the truth. And I'm thinking about an individual who recently was banned from PayPal. He's a, a bio evolutionary biologist and writer, and he said that there's only two sexes, male and women, man and woman. And from that point, he was banned. They held his money for 180 days. And there's been other people who have be, been deplatformed, de excuse me, from PayPal. So this is a trend. We're seeing this in Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And now over to PayPal, which is a real nasty consideration for a lot of Americans who have money there and they don't know what they may do next. I mean, Jackie, when they tie up your money, it, it's a big concern for people, but to Gianna's point, this isn't the first time we have seen big tech interfere, especially when it comes to money. I think back to Canada not too long ago. Yeah, I oh thought exactly gosh. the same thing when GoFundMe um, wanted to suspend millions of dollars in donations that were made to help the Canadian truckers who were protesting uh, vaccine mandates. Yeah. This is what happens with big tech and social media in general. It's one thing if you want to say, well, I'm going to suspend your Twitter account. Okay, well, we can have a free speech conversation. Now you're putting money in the mix here and there's a financial penalty too. It's outrageous. Um, and, and all these companies say the same thing. Well, if you violate our policies, the policies aren't really clear. They're ambiguous. People don't exactly know what they mean, and they can twist them and bend them yeah, to right. fit their own narrative, whatever that is. The, the thing that I say about this all the time, the only way to hit back at these companies is for users to see this in, in a case like PayPal and say, I'm not using your platform. I don't believe that you made a mistake, and I'm not going to give you my business. Yeah, because it doesn't feel, Sean, like they made a mistake. It feels like they got caught, and they said, wait a minute. Oh, this was, a, this was an error. We didn't mean to do this. But this is, we continue to see this happen, and the question is, who is the arbiter of truth? You talked yeah. about that a minute ago, Gianno. Yeah. Who gets to make these decisions? I think about the disinformation czar. It was a very <laughs> real prospect. Scary Poppins. Not too long ago. I mean, where does this go? Because it feels very Orwellian where we're headed. Well, make no mistake. They sat down and wrote that policy. They had meetings on that oh, policy. Oh, absolutely. And they published the policy, and then they got backlash and said it was a mistake. There was no mistake. There was, there was deep conversation there about were. drafting that policy that they put out. The backlash is what caused them to mm. call it an error. But you mentioned GoFundMe, right? GoFundMe, they froze accounts. They suspended accounts. But they didn't seize other people's money at GoFundMe. This is the first time you're saying if you use that's misinformation. Because, that's because in the U.S. the states got involved. Right, the government got involved. And that's the only reason why they released that money. But, but, but misinformation can cause you $2,500. You can be kicked off a platform, but it didn't cost you $2,500. This is a whole new realm that we're going into in regard to 
disinformation. They're trying to profit again, off of it. Whether, whether it was there's two sexes or the Hunter Biden laptop, they'll yeah. call all of that disinformation, yeah. which we actually know is true. And so I'm a big fan of crypto. It's decentralized. Um, there's, there's no head company that decides who gets in and who gets out. It's, it's open to everyone who wants to use it. And I think this is a greater push to, to, to those ends. And Peter Thiel, uh, Elon Musk, the, some of the founders of PayPal, which is also, uh, also owns Venmo, yeah. they believe in free speech. They're, they're conservatives. They want to hear the debate, and they also believe in crypto. So I think this is just PayPal and Venmo are, are a little stepping stone as we get to the free system of crypto. And, that, and the interesting part, Elon says he's not a conservative, but now that we think about people with in, involved in free speech who believe in free speech, is all of a sudden, man, these folks are conservative because it seems like everything has moved so far to the left that if you just say something that's a fact, it's like, wow, that person must be a conservative. It's so much misinformation out there that these companies should be fine themselves. Listen, I'm, I'm not a Marxist. I'm not a Marxist, so I must be a Republican. <laughs> And it's not I just know, clawing so back money, too. You're right that this is the first time that there'll be a fine or a penalty for something like this. But it's also this idea of tracking, right? Tracking all the transactions, mm -hmm. knowing what every individual in this country is doing and keeping tabs on them. That's a lot of the reason that crypto is gaining such momentum as well. Sure. People don't want to, to give that kind of information out. To me, the, the moral here, if, if there is anything to take from this, is that when people call it out, then they, they change course. You know, I think about the disinformations. Our people went crazy over that because yeah, it's true. insane. Like, we, this is a, totally un-American yeah. to have, you know, d this, some random person deciding what is true and what is not true. And no different here. I think the pushback actually calls attention, and maybe that's a good thing. We need to keep that in mind. I, I always feel I, like, I, as an American, I think it's a, I think it's only a pause. I think this is this oh, is that's the probably push. True. This is the effort. They'll come yeah. back again with an, with another proposal to seize your money if they disagree with what you say. They got caught today, but there'll be, you know, new systems in place to try to can, can, can find what you can say mm. publicly because they want to control your speech. Well, this let's take that to us when we go vote for the midterms.